Let's face it, if our lives are full of distress, as they seem to be for so many of us today, how in the world can we be at our best in all that we do, let alone live a life full of joy, health, happiness, and thrive? And that's what today's video is about. I'd like to teach you a four-step framework to consider this as four steps to get to the point of living your best life. So let's go right into it right now. Step number one is it takes self-awareness. In other words, we need to observe ourselves and our lives free of judgment, to be as objective as possible, like a reporter, a journalist, looking at someone objectively in their life takes a skill, doesn't it? It's easier said than done. Self-awareness is considered to be the very fundamental step for good health, well-being. It's the beginning. It's also with self-awareness important that we give ourselves permission while we're doing this not to be perfect. Recognizing that every step we take, sometimes we'll succeed, we'll make progress, and sometimes we'll fall flat. And while we're doing this with self-awareness, we want to what? Acknowledge the difficulties, acknowledge the circumstances, but not make it any worse, not wallow in it, not worry about it excessively, which is a waste of time. And then so that we can begin to strategize and plan, you know, how are we going to turn this around? The second step in this plan would be to unplug from the patterns that no longer serve your highest good. So once you decide what patterns of behavior you're stuck with, well, I don't mean to say you're stuck with it, that it seems like you're stuck with, because you're never stuck. If you have the right training, you can change any pattern. But some of these patterns get in the way. Some of these patterns of behavior, because it's the same old, same old, they're the patterns of behavior that are the, the least resistance so once you decide what's no longer serving your highest good, we then need to what? Stay out of survival and fear. When we go into survival and fear, and you know this perhaps if you've been following, all the research shows it, that when we go into survival mode, we flood the body with distress, and as we, our hormones change and we're full of stress, it's hard to think. It's hard to concentrate. It's hard to focus clearly. So it's important to shift out of that into a state of what? Into a state of abundance, into a state of openness, into a state of, of, of joy. And you do that by how? I know it's a lot easier said than done. It's important to praise more, and I want you to start praising more and complaining less. <laughs> I know that it seems like we have a lot to complain about. I agree. I'm with you with that. I'm going through it too. We're all in this together. You got to ask yourself though. Oh, people say, well, I'm just venting. There's a difference between venting. There's a difference between recognizing and acknowledging a feeling and emotion and wallowing in it and perpetuating it by repeating it and repeating it, which means you're mentally rehearsing what you don't want. So once you acknowledge what's wrong, the difficulty, the challenge, start praising more. Look for some of the good in your life. Look for what's working. Look for what you feel appreciative of, some gratitude. So that's how you begin to start unplugging from those patterns. And you want to embrace while you're doing this being uncomfortable. If you're feeling uncomfortable, fantastic. That's a sign that you're stepping out of your comfort zone. Because if you're feeling comfortable, it's because you're in familiar territory. Same old, same old. And if we're not aware of it, unconsciously, we sometimes much rather live in the predictability of a problem, a challenge. I know that sounds crazy, but we know that to be true. Rather than do something different. Because when you do something different, or you work on a new pattern, or you take a new training, or you're being mentored and you start feeling that, that's a good sign that you're beginning to step out of that comfort zone. And when you have the proper support, 
when you have people behind you helping, it's a lot easier. The third step in this four-step framework that I'm sharing with you is to take steps, take action. It's no longer an option whether to do the inner work or not. It's necessary. I also wish it wasn't so, but it's necessary. If you're not doing the inner work, then all you're doing is becoming an intellectual consumer, a consumer of intellectual knowledge. Information is kind of cool, huh? but it, what does it do for us? Unless we integrate it, make it a part of us. So I want you to start looking more, not to consume more knowledge, more, I don't know, courses, but practical steps, things you can do. So. We want to want, take action to move forward. And as you're moving forward, you want to do this with a life vision of your best self emerging in all that you do as if it has happened already. So in a quiet state, in a quiet, relaxed state, which is the best way to do it, eyelids closed in a dynamic meditation state, what we call the alpha and theta state in the silver life and intuition system training, you mentally rehearse, you visualize your best self emerging in all that you do as if it's already happened. And how do you accomplish that? That elevated emotional experience? By including the benefits, both the intrinsic and extrinsic benefits. How, as your best self emerges, how will it benefit you in your life? What will you be able to do as a result? And how will it benefit anyone you care about? the world at large. Boy, the world needs this more than ever. And number four, we want to reset. Hit the reset button. Re-educate. Retrain your brain. Fire and wire, however you want to call it. It is necessary. All the research shows the quickest way to change a pattern and make it permanent is to internalize it. And the quickest, most effective way that I know. I've been in this field. If you haven't followed my work, my name is Ken Kasha. I'm in my 51st year. Wow. That's half, more than half of a century. I've been traveling the world, working with people like you all over the world, different cultures, hundreds of thousands of people, up close and personal, by the way, in in-person events, small groups, large groups. I constantly, consistently coach and mentor people. And I'm telling you, if all you're doing is reading a book, attending a course, it's a great idea. It feels good for a while. But unless you have a vehicle, a tool, the right training to integrate it. And I recommend that you develop a meditation tool. In the Silver Method, we use dynamic meditation where you can be both active and passive. And it's a training where you change your brainwave state into a sleep-like state of alpha and theta. And while in that state, you can get there right now. Eyelids closed, a few slow deep breaths. Feel some gratitude, feel some appreciation, and then mentally rehearse. Visualize your best self emerging. And make a little story, a little game out of it, as if it's happened already. And imagine all the benefits, how you feel, what it will look like, what people will say to you. And do this every day. And you notice yourself thinking, more optimistically. And when you're feeling optimistic, when you're feeling hopeful, you're going to be more likely to access the higher thinking functions of the brain. You'll have more innovations. You'll be accessing your intuition to get ideas, insights as to how to get out of the mess that you may find yourself in at this point in time. So please do this. The four steps begins with self-awareness. Second, you then need to what? Unplug, unplug, take action, move forward, and then fire and wire or retrain, re-educate the brain. So let me run that by you one more time. I get my famous cards here. Self-awareness, the first step. Our second step is unplug from the patterns. Third step, take steps, take action, or nothing happens without that. And then hit the reset button, which means reprogram, re-educate your brain, internalize those changes, and repetition, repetition, repetition is necessary, my friends.